all the colleges or universities you could have attended, why did you choose UNL? So initially the, the first choice was pretty easy, I guess, coming to Nebraska. Uh, living in Nebraska as a kid and growing up, seeing the Huskers play and, and hearing a lot about the university. So it was a pretty easy decision to come for undergrad. Uh, after that, I'd learned quite a bit. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with Dr. Hage and a number of different professors, and I did look around a little bit at a number of different colleges, and in the end, there just was really no place like Nebraska. Um, I had uh, quite a different uh, uh, research experience going through grad school and got to learn a lot of new things, so I think in the end, it was a, a pretty easy decision. From the undergraduate level, you got to work with Dr. Hage. How did that work? Were you part of the UCARE program, or how was that initiated? Uh, so it was actually initiated uh, through a number of conversations with uh, professors. They always said, as you're interested in chemistry, you know, look at some of the uh, individual professors and have discussions with them. And so I'd heard about Dr. Hage's research from a couple of people around the building and I uh, ended up just having a conversation with him about starting and I think just the openness of the university to uh, have undergrads do research uh, kind of facilitates that uh, decision and process to speaking with the, the professors. And as an undergrad, you were also published, weren't you? Yes. So how rare is that? Um, you know, I think it happens from time to time from, from different people. Um, it was uh, definitely an opportunity for, for me to get to work on a project that was uh, uh, easily had impact and was translatable into real world science that uh, gave us the opportunity to publish something relatively quickly as an undergrad. Of all the areas of chemistry you could have gone into, what was the deciding factor that led you to analytical chemistry? Uh, so analytical chemistry um, was something that interested me uh, right away. Uh, being able to measure something accurately and precisely, I think is very important in a uh, number of fields. And I think that the application to a broad array of different types of sciences was one of the big uh, factors that led me towards analytical chemistry. Uh, but beyond that, really, uh, medicine and disease states is something that is very, very interesting, and a lot of that involves biochemistry. So in the end, melding the two together into uh, analytical biochemistry was uh, definitely the right decision for me, uh, being able to use analytical techniques to try to solve uh, health-related problems. So John, a lot of undergraduates typically will go to a different institution other than the, their, uh, their undergraduate institution. However, you chose to stay at UNL for your graduate uh, studies. Why did you choose to stay here for your graduate as well? I, I, as I mentioned, I went and looked at a number of different schools and uh, uh, looked at different research programs, different advisors, and uh, had a number of opportunities to look into various programs. Uh, but what I really, really realized was during my undergraduate research opportunity with Dr. Hage, I saw the other graduate students uh, working in the lab, and I was able to see bits and pieces of their projects and realized that although I'd done quite a bit in the lab as an undergraduate, I still had quite a bit to learn from Dr. Hage and other professors at the university, and it just uh, fit really with uh, what I wanted to do with my career. And, and from what I understand, you are very well decorated and awarded graduate students. So uh, congratulations on that regard. As an alumnus, what are some of the fond memories that you've had at UNL that you'd like to share with us? Uh, so I've had quite a few fond memories. Uh, first and foremost, as an undergrad, I think uh, one of my side activities was being the first goalie ever of the UNL lacrosse team. Uh, so that was quite a fun time that our, uh, some of my friends and I started the UNL lacrosse team that now is a pretty shining example of a club team uh, here on campus. So uh, that was definitely a memory. Um, another really good memory I have was uh, giving my first seminar in uh, one of our uh, division colloquia. And I, I gave an answer to a question that Dr. Redepenning had asked me. And uh, he sat back in his chair and laughed and said, that was a great answer. Completely wrong, but great nonetheless. And I think that really stuck with me uh, throughout uh, my career, knowing that you're not always going to have the right answer, but it's perfectly okay to speak up and uh, give your best shot. So, so did Dr. Redepenning explain why it was completely wrong? <laughs> he sure did, and I made sure not to make the same mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just, just curious. Uh, thank you. You know, graduate school can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. what, were you, what would you say were some of your most challenging times while you were here in, at graduate school? Hmm. So the research at times definitely gets challenging and uh, I think that uh, early on some of the classes uh, were, were definitely challenging aspects but uh, probably the hardest aspect of graduate school was balancing the number of different uh, uh, positions that you need to both do classroom uh, research as well as teaching 
And so it was, it was difficult to balance at first, but it really gives you a, a better appreciation when you get into a real world position that there's not just one science project focus, but rather you need to balance a variety of aspects in order to complete a full job function. So, so often for graduate students, the length of time it takes to get a graduate degree can seem very daunting. Did you ever feel that way? The thought, I don't think I'm going to graduate or I'm never going to finish? So I would probably say the, the uh, end of my last year as a uh, research uh, graduate student, I, I definitely started to look for the light at the end of the tunnel and, and start to look much harder for the light at the end of the tunnel. And as it turns out, uh, my advisor, Dr. Hage, had said that there was one additional project that he thought that uh, he'd like me to do. And as it turns out, uh, looking back on that, I'm very glad that I did that final project. Um, it was the first time that I really got to use a monoclonal antibody, uh, or excuse me, an antibody uh, for uh, research purposes and really start to use a number of the sample handling techniques. And that translated into essentially what I do today. So um, although that light at the end of the tunnel was long and uh, sought for, uh, that final steps through the tunnel were definitely well worth it. And uh, I think now I'm just looking for new tunnels to, to go down. So. so what would you say surprised you about graduate school? So initially it was uh, the uh, class load actually. And it was a, a little bit different than undergraduate in the way that the, the classes were taught and the way that the material was uh, transferred in that it wasn't just a, a memorization of text and, and kind of learning things, but rather solving problems and trying to work your way through a problem rather than uh, just understanding that there's one uh, method, but rather solving uh, the intricate details of how to get to a solution to a problem. And really the uh, learning how to learn as opposed to uh, simply looking at a question and finding an answer. You work as a research chemist with NIST Biomanufacturing Program, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what you do there and uh, uh, what is the broader impact to the scientific community? Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we're actually working on a monoclonal antibody reference material. Uh, so monoclonal antibodies are the largest uh, growing class of therapeutic and these are extremely large uh, molecules. So compared to something like aspirin, these are uh, 100 times greater uh, in size and complexity. So there's a lot of difficulty in characterizing the various aspects of these drug molecules, which need to be very well characterized in order to sure, ensure that they're safe and uh, efficacious. So our organization is making a reference material to be a class-specific uh, reference product that will have historical data along with it, just as a drug product would, to help facilitate originer and follow-on biopharmaceutical manufacturers to make safer, um, more well-characterized drug products and essentially facilitate uh, the approval process. So the end impact of this is really related to a lot of uh, uh, national goals and priorities in reducing the cost of healthcare. Uh, so currently, production of these biopharmaceuticals from initial phase to uh, final development and marketing is about 10 years and can be a billion dollar process essentially to get from identity or identification to completion. So by facilitating some of this analytical uh, workflow with the reference material, we hope to reduce that time and then allow uh, these biosimilars to be manufactured in a uh, quicker time frame and uh, essentially then go to marketplace uh, quicker, reducing costs to patients uh, throughout the U.S. Okay. How would you uh, say that UNL has affected your uh, prospects to obtain your current position? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it actually was uh, the, the solidifying force, I think, in uh, giving me the ability to uh, gain this current position. So um, really, as I'd mentioned, that one of the things that they teach us here is how to work through a problem and, and really learn to learn and solve new issues. And when I got to NIST, it was a, a new area of research that I hadn't done before. And there was a lot of learning to be done and a lot of problem solving to be done. And I think Nebraska really prepared me for the ability to attack a new problem and uh, look at it from a separate angle and try to work my way to a solution. You have just earned the College of Arts and Sciences Early Achiever Award. How do you feel about that? Uh, it was a pretty, pretty good experience to uh, hear from my old professors to say that they wanted to nominate me for award and uh, that they had a, nominated me and that the university had actually selected me. Um, I think the university has given me so much over the years, uh, not only in education, but in the experiences I had here as a student in meeting friends and faculty and coworkers. 
And so the opportunity to come back uh, for this award and, and have a chance to really uh, revisit the university and see all the new developments is, has been uh, very humbling. I have a couple comments from some of your nominators. Dr. Berkowitz, he mentioned, and I'm not sure if he was one of the nominators, but he did make a comment. Um, John is a real star and one of the most interesting, interesting examples of a top flight UNL undergraduate who chose to stay on at, the, at, at Nebraska for graduate school and then received national acclaim. A uh, quote from Dr. Berkowitz. A quote from Dr. H. I would r rank him, you, <laughs> as the top, the top student I have had, which would now be out of a group of 50 total that I have gotten in PhD and master's degrees from my group. What does that mean to you to hear those comments? It, it definitely means a lot. Um, I think, you know, hearing that acclaim definitely makes me think about how, you know, no work that I could have done could have been possible without some of those professors and, and especially Dr. Hage and Dr. Berkowitz. Uh, my current position actually uh, involves carbohydrates. My first uh, carbohydrate class was with Dr. Berkowitz. And when I left UNL, I was looking at a project Dr. Hage was doing with one of my coworkers and it really led me down the path. So, you know, hearing that, uh, uh, that they've also, I guess, approve of my uh, path down uh, Research Avenue and, and think that things are going well is, is, is very, very important to me. What words of advice do you have for our current graduate students and undergraduate for that matter, since you've been both? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, keeping in mind as you go forward some of the things that uh, you've learned throughout your time here, both from professors as well as uh, fellow students, um, remembering that every little piece of thing that you learn uh, will eventually translate and, and help you in the future and you never know what that small piece might be so I would say uh, uh, continue to learn from those around you and as you move beyond uh, here know that you may not ever know everything but uh, surrounding yourself with people like those at Nebraska are a good way to assist in, in making the full uh, realization. Well uh, with that Dr. Shield, thank you for joining us for this uh, question and answer session, and we wish, we wish you the best of luck. Great, thank you very much. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's Chemistry Department, I'm Carrie Vondrak. Thank you for watching.